Now, yes, so I'm very glad now to be able to introduce Ruth Chad Garcia Aramilo. And Ruth is adjunct professor and lecturer in the art, social sciences, and humanities at Lynn Benton Community College. She's a PhD candidate in the philosophy of religion process studies program at Claremont School of Theology, where she's working on her dissertation under the mentorship of Drs. Roland Faber, Philip Clayton, and Andrew Schwartz. Ruth is also the library and archives manager at the Center for Process Studies, whew, a faculty-based research center of CST. Her areas of research and teaching include topics within global environmental ethics, eco-aesthetics, post-structuralism, de-anthropocentrism, queer studies, and Dharmic philosophical religious traditions. And I hear Ruth is also a composer and musician who enjoys playing the harp trail running, mushroom hunting, and surfing <laughs> the PNW coast whenever possible. <laughs> so I read. <laughs> Welcome, Ruth. Oh, dear goodness. If they had told me in advance Dr. Keller would be the moderator for my paper presentation, I would have said, please, just don't introduce me, just be kind, okay? Just don't, don't tear me apart too much. <laughs> it's cold in here today, so I'm put my coat back on because I'm a little chilly. Um, you know, my work at this point, as a, as a research scholar primarily, um, is mostly concerned with emergent advances in uh, AI and kind of exo philosophy topics, as well as both Anthropocene topics that are interesting to me. And um, I, they're interesting because, like many of you have noted, they're imperatives for our time. Uh, my dissertation is, is titled uh, Toward Transhuman Futures, Dreams of a Post-Anthropocene Ecopoiesis. And due to like six years plus of studying under uh, Dr. Roland Faber, I'm just about as grateful as someone could be to, you know, kind of look after these, these uh, ideas and their labors of love that I'm very grateful for. So, <clears throat> quite simply, I'm interested in neither the image about what is deep meaning, per se, nor the representation, nor the hall of, you know, reflected mirrors, endless, but I am interested in systems of relations. And so in lieu of that, and in lieu of the rapid pace and change that globalization um, requires in our interconnected age, in hopes for a more peaceful, healthy, uh, abundant, and hopefully like surviving species, <laughs> um, we, we really must bring our rigor to a, an aim that is interested in the reorganization of what it means to dwell in the earth, ethopolitically, ecologically, et cetera. I say all these things because I'm standing at a podium, so I feel obligated to just preach my perspective. So I apologize, it's, it's the podium here that <laughs> is pulling out the, the seriousness. You know, Anthropocene techno-industrialism has the um, ability and the power, really, we, and the power, it's not separate, it's within human um, evolution and uh, to both disenchant and reconstruct um, our environments for future, future, hopefully future, global society within the possibilities of play, not, <clears throat> not just crisis. Um, and additionally, theories related to information sharing and information systems are useful in this and in particular relevance to my, to my focus. So uh, I, I suppose maybe be, before beginning, pro, prolegomenon, you know, before the actual speaking, um, perhaps I am in line with um, somewhat of a prayer of a mentor or, you know, leader in thought for me, Michel Serres, who this paper is kind of devoted to in relation to White's, Whitehead's process philosophy, um, that, that, we may, uh, that we may find a way back to the lightness, the lightness uh, instead of lead, paying our way in the world with bullets and 
death, we can use, you know, the lightness of a feather, the quill of a pen, um, that we may enchant, reconstruct, and may our science get to a point beyond our own death drive. Okay. <laughs> That's a passion, a prayer of mine. Amen. Love is the third. It is third uh, between two. It is exactly the included third, always between. Between science and ignorance, neither indigent nor wealthy, neither dead nor immortal, it is placed without precision and with, with rigor in the laws of the logic of the fuzzy. And it lives in this fuzzy area of the threshold, homeless, transient, near the door, at the doorway, leaving the party, coming back, a little lost. It is the third, excluded and included. Um, Philosopher Michel Serge wrote that the theory of being ontology brings us to atoms and the theory of relations brings us to the parasite. So if ever there were a thinker who clarified that uh, which we have come to call post-human, that, that it's indeed not that which simply comes about after humanism, it most definitely or assuredly in my opinion is Michel Serge's um, current discourse offers renderings of the post in post-human as being that in which so the story goes, the human is transformed and finally eclipsed or obliterated, that's my bracket, by various technologic, informatic, and bioengineering developments rooted in the 20th century and then greatly accelerated by the practical demands of two, possibly three, my brackets, world wars and cold wars that continue to chill diplomacy internationally to the present moment. In contrast to this perspective, uh, Serres' uh, view and his work in, in philosophy was a bit controversial in its time um, for, for many reasons. Uh, it, his, his perspective asserts that in a half playful way and also borrowing from Bruno Latour, the, that we have never been fully human. His book is, we've never been fully modern. We've never been modern. If by defining human as the free agent, the citizen builder of the Leviathan, the distressing visage of the human person, the other of a relationship consciousness, the cogito, the hermeneut, the inner self, the thee and thou, blah, blah, presence to oneself, intersubjectivity. I don't say blah, blah lightly. Thee, thou, tatvam asi. I, you know, I deeply carry that. But the list goes on. Um, in contrast to Latour, Serres does not simply assert, but rather assumes a performative act in his work, um, and it is a labor of love um, that I believe we are all here for and doing in our, in our lives, um, in which his transdisciplinary understandings, his background and understanding of mathematics and science are interwoven and threaded in a, in a litany of books. I think it was over 35 titles, maybe, by the end of his life. Um, but The Parasite was actually translated um, by John Hopkins University Press in the early 80s, just giving a nod. And then later, um, the translation I'm working from is um, from many decades later. Or not many decades, oof, one decade later. Um, what makes his work in The Parasite, this is the book that I'm referencing in my paper, particularly interesting to this conversation in dialogue with process philosophy, is the very post-human preoccupation, um, which according to Serres actually subtends and precedes um, the human, both ontologically and epistemologically, with uh, the preoccupation with unity, oneness, kind of a obsession with, um, and what he does is he consequently upends this notion by showing the very composite nature through use of the parasite, and that's the tool um, that is useful to this conversation today. Um, of course, the challenge is not so much to expose the false tidiness of unities in themselves, and I remain in line with a, num a number of other thinkers. Of course, I am bound to uh, Faber in this regard uh, in terms of the rhizomatic um, nature of, of relations and organisms, that we are little sure of the one as of the multiple. We've never hit upon truly atomic multiple indivisible terms that were not themselves, once again, composite. So that is to say, the, the bottom always goes out. Um, terre sans terre. The, the ground is, there is no ground. Um, beneath our feet, any time we go on the quest for something elementary or, you know, at the, at the ground of it all. But further, um, 
the irreducibly individual perpetually recedes like the horizon as our analyses advance. So the problem, I see, as I see it, is how, to, how difficult it is to perform the thinking. And this is also uh, something to play with as an object for new philosophy. And it is not play for the sake of mental play and you know, stimulation um, for the sake of stimulation. It is for the sake of uh, embracing that space between where there is noise and where the parasite becomes a way of endeavoring to make a better world. Hmm. So there must be some kind of strangeness involved in that that looses language itself from the death mark of our wonderful advance as a species. Um, so in terms of the parasite, I wanted to talk about that for a minute because in Serre's um, understanding of it and in, in the French as well, the, the word uh, haut, la haute, la haute is, is just having to do with host, but it also in the French means the host and the guest, so it's both and. Um, the relationship between host and parasite in this sense is less a drain on the en energy. We're not looking at parasite as something that just drains an organism, but rather something that changes the very nature of the host, because the minute you open your door um, to the strange or the stranger, you are giving of yourself, but you're also engaging in a, a kind of social exchange that also changes you. For example, um, types of parasites that are interesting to me, and also many others, of course, um, here today, are biological types of um, systems that interplay together. Parasite is an organism that lives in a body or under the skin. It harms the host. Generally speaking, it takes something in a one way without providing benefit. Uh, it's also a social reference. Um, and actually, the social might have come, bef it actually kind of did come before the biological sciences because it was a way of referencing um, particularly oppressed, systematically oppressed people groups and minorities. And that came about because of agriculture. And informational, the parasit, the parasit is the static. And this is an area of great interest to me because the static is the place of noise in relation to uh, a system. So for Sarah's, an organized system exists in opposition to noise. And static is not static like something not moving or not living or not being. Um, it, in the sense, and he wrote primarily, he did write um, this book in French, the word static ha is coming from an information theory um, basis and refers to an interruption in the signal, a break in a chain of communication and so forth. So, as a pragmatic tool for this, noise is an exciter. It's a form of kind of a thermal exciter that is kind of, in my view, the, the you can say whatever you want. The modern, the postmodern, the neo-postmodern, the, I heard someone say late, er, earlier the post-Nietzschean, neo-Nietzschean, neo well, I don't know. Um, this is the prerogative of the human, you know, free will agent choice to kind of go back to bed with Nietzsche, and I do that in this paper because between the folds of waking thought and dreaming, Nietzsche went into that space in, in beautiful ways and offers an interesting place to examine where complex unity is, can be at home in the questions as they are lived amidst great tragedy, amidst great moral ill, and, and, and amidst even madness. That is our world today. Argue with me if you, you know. I'm a little depressed about it. Um, Gilles Deleuze says that it, it is well that one takes a step for life, a step for thought. Modes of life inspire ways of thinking. Modes of thinking create ways of living. Life activates thought, and thought in turn affirms life. This is the gift that Nietzsche gave of aphorism and poetry, um, and the peculiar so, uh, solitude, sensuality, and very unwise ends of the perilous existence that lie beneath this mask. So this is the leaping point, and you know, Deleuze talks about it being the witch's broom, you know, here we go. But um, how am I doing on time? I've got 13 minutes to go. I've got seven minutes left. Great, okay. Um, so here we go. So um, uh, 
I wish I had the image of Anselm Furbach's um, painting of Alcibiades kind of leaving the party drunk, who's in love with Socrates, right? But he come, he's coming back to the party and he's kind of, Agathon has kind of made him jealous because he also is a lover and uh, Alcibiades comes back. Alcibiades in, in this regard and in this paper and in this kind of um, dialogue is the incarnation of love and he returns to the party, he returns to the, to the situation, to tragedy, um, surrounded by music. Music definitely attends, acts as a passageway to the new, the not yet made future. Alcibiades, wounded lover, hungry ghost, love as intermediary, neither a god nor a mortal, neither rich or poor, assuming the middle spot between knowledge and ignorance among the fuzzy subsets. So love as parasite runs directly to Agathon, the host, Things become undone. He's between knowing what to do, where to go, even who he is, subliminal. And if he is between, he is love. Coming from the threshold and from the door, between two winds, fuzzy-minded, ignorant and knowledgeable, yada, yada. Beyond noise, through noise, and into the order of, of discourse. Because there is a triangle going on between the three, and because there is always a, a way of taking energy and removing it and putting it to another host, the, I'm interested in talking about the excluded and included third, and that's what this moment is. And Nietzsche invites us into this third space. The question is no longer that of love, but rather something more general. Uh, who, who are you? What are you doing here? And this space is where, uh, as Whitehead understood it, the harbinger of novelty, creative advance, and infinite processuality of becoming um, occurs. Roland Faber assists, uh, insists also that to hinder the closure of the gap of that mystery between the excluded and included, to, to, to close that gap, um, you, you, you actually, to hinder the closure of the gap that the mystery of the infinite opens up a space in which we can meditate on and hopefully create and recreate a purposeful future that does less harm. I mean, it's kind of, it's not that simple, but that's hopefully, it's hopefully that simple. Parasite holds a special place in this discussion because it models the fu fluid passage in the notion of the excluded middle of binary logic, who or that is no longer willing to remain excluded. So aided by the fact that the excluded third, uh, la tiers exclu, the, the third person excluded, is a linguistic instance favoring a numerical metaphor. Sears analyzes it from the perspective of parasitic operator whose intrusive activities set the stage for multiple objects of investigation. It was also Deleuze that wrote that with Leibniz the question surges forth in philosophy that will continue to haunt both Whitehead and Bergson. Faber, Faber talks about this in um, Rhizomatic. Um, connections having to do with not how to attain eternity, but in what conditions does the objective world allow for a subjective production of novelty, that is, of creation. I hop through because this is too long and I sent Dr. Keller way too long of a paper, but... Um, You've got two minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm just scrolling down to the, front, <laughs> to the conclusion. <laughs> So the aim of expression is distributed through omnis and unum, uh, one to one, one to multiple, multiple to one, multiple to multiple. There is a parasitic connection always already going on in systems, relational systems. And that's what we were talking about in a Whiteheadian sense. It's all um, relational. And I'm fascinated by the ways that philosophy of organism is based upon a process relational ontology for natural science that replaces a very severely defunct um, ontology. Also the under understanding of time and space. I suppose that if I wanted to end somewhere, I would say that, you know, I would probably end with Nietzsche. Um, Deleuze gives a lot of consideration to this in lieu of Nietzsche's de definition of the eternal return and the complete metamorphosis, the irreducibly unequal, depth, distance, caves, the lower depths, the tortuous, the unequal in itself from the only landscape of the eternal return. 
nature resides in chaos. I remember that from Dr. Keller's uh, Face of the Deep. And um, I, I'm just gonna kind of stop there because we could go on, but here we are. I think I'm done for now. Yeah.